You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramat Israel, 5778 2018. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Chukas, and I would like to share with you a beautiful Medrash. Um, could be that you are familiar with this Medrash. It's very interesting when we see it inside. So there's an amazing depth. Of course, every single word of Chazal is, is measured and chosen carefully. So let's read this Medrash together. At the end of our Parsha, the Torah tells us that, um, or actually I'm not exactly sure exactly where it is in the Parsha, but in our Parsha, I think it's at the end, so we have the the Shira, a special Shira, a song. The Jewish people have sang, sang many different songs. Perhaps the most famous one is Az Yashir, which they sang after they came through the sea. But there's another song which the Jewish people sang, and that was at the end of their 40 years in the desert. And this song was a song about the Be'er. It was about the, the special well that the Jewish people had water from throughout their 40 years in, a, in the Midbar, in the wilderness. And the question that the Medrash comes to address is, why are they singing this song now? Why do they wait, wait till the end of the 40 years? Why don't they sing it way back at the beginning? And so the Medrash tells us that something different happened at the very end of their time in the wilderness, involving the water, involving the Be'er. And as a result of that, that was why they began singing. Az Yashir Yisrael Sashira Hazais. Then the people of Israel sang this song. Ashira Hazais Nemer Besef Arboim Shona. The Medrash tells us that this song was said at the end of the 40 years. Va'be'er nitna lahem mitchilas arboim. Ma'rali kasev kan. Why, if they're, why are they singing this song now? Or why is it being written here now? If, if they've had this throughout the 40 years. The measure tells us that we can, we can see that from the fact that the, the verses place this concept next to a different concept, so many times the Torah places two ideas next to each other that aren't per, per se sequential in order to teach us that there's a connection. The verse previous refers to the the book of the wars of Hashem. It refers to a place, Vahe Vesufa, which the Eitz explains the Medrash's understanding to mean that that it's there's a reference back to something that happened all the way at the beginning of their time. Vahe Vesufa is a reference to the song that they sang on Yamsuf when they came through the water. At this point in time, at the end of their 40 years, when they were at the the um, the Nachal Arnon, which was a river, when they were on the edge of entering into the land of Israel, there were miracles that occurred there, that were comparable to the miracles that occurred when they left Egypt originally. The measure says, what is the measure? What is the, I'm sorry, what are the miracles that were done there on Nachle Arno? So the measure tells us something very interesting and very deep if we understand what it's talking about. He had two mountains that stood opposite each other, each on either side of this river called Nachle Arnon. Okay? Now, these mountains were actually close enough that a person standing on the top of one mountain and another person on the top of the other mountain, they could speak to each other. They could hear each other. They were close enough. Okay? However, in order to get from one to the other, you had to pass through the valley. And that, that distance was seven mil, which was a certain distance, which wasn't very close. And you had a valley between the two mountains. And in the middle of the valley, it was like the Grand Canyon. There was a, a river running through that area. Now, the Jewish people's path should have brought them through that Nachal, through that uh, canyon area. Now, because the nations of the world knew that, a tremendous amount of people from the nations of the world, perhaps people from the nations of Canaan, gathered there in order to stop the Jewish people. Many, many chayalim, many um, soldiers gathered there in order to stop the Jewish people. Now, very interesting. Some of them sat inside of the river, inside of the canyon. 
Very interestingly, you had these two mountains that were opposite each other, okay? Now, one mountain looked like this, a mount, it, was, it was like a cave on the inside, okay? And then on the other side, the mountain looked like this, it was sticking out, such that you can imagine that one could, it, the mountains could stick into each other. Now, what people did was, some of these soldiers, in order to stand above the Jews, in order to attack them from above, so they stood inside of the Ma'ara, they stood inside of the cave, so one side was sticking out, and one side was was a, a crevice. Shnei Rav Eshed and the there were protrusions on one side. So so it's very interesting. The protrusions were sticking out. We're going to see that they were sticking out from the side of Eretz Yisrael, from the side of Israel. The side of Israel stuck out, and the other side stuck in. Okay. Very interesting. Nechnesu achlus and the 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 soldiers entered into the caves. So we're going to trap them. That's what they. That's what they said. We're going to trap them. Those soldiers are going to be inside and block them from passing. And then the soldiers who are above will be able to to kill them. We'll kill them all. So now what happened was Hashem of course, was protecting the Jewish people, but he made an awesome miracle. What was the miracle? The miracle was manyfold. First miracle. They got to the top of this, of this precipice, this, this canyon. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu made a miracle happen that instead of them having to go down into the canyon and then come back up, instead what happened was they, the, the mountains came together. Okay? What happened was the two mountains came together. This is the side of Eretz Yisrael, which was sticking out. There was a protrusion. This was the side where they were staying inside of these caves. The two sides came together, formed a block, such that the Jewish people could easily pass over between one side and the other. Okay? So the protrusion stuck out into the caves. And all of the people who were inside of the caves died, all of those soldiers. And the two mountains reached their heads over to each other. It wasn't even obvious that there were two mountains that were, that were sticking next to each other. It just looked like one path. That's all the Jewish people experienced. They didn't even realize that they were saved from all these soldiers who wanted to kill them. This is a river which is on the border between the land of Israel and the land of Moab. As the verse says in, in verse 13, that this, this river, the Arnon River, is the border between Moab and Amori. And the Mori were living inside of Israel. Okay? Now, Harshim Eretz Moab Lonezdaza, Shabayama Ares. So, as we said, on one side there were caves which was the side of Chutzlar, it's outside of Israel. The other side, there was a protrusion from, from the other side of the mountain. The side with the cave didn't move. Well, the side of Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel, that, that mountain moved over to the side of Chutzlar. Okay? That had the protrusions. And it pushed itself right up next to the mountain that was, that was uh, opposite it. Now, very interesting. So, how do, the Medrash says, how, how do we know that it was Eretz Yisrael, the, the mountains from Eretz Yisrael stuck themselves out towards Chutz Laaretz? When they imagine this, that's the mission of Eretz Yisrael from the land of Israel, Mashal Shifcha. So, this is analogous to a Shifcha, Sharasa Ben Adene Ba'etzla. You have a, a maidservant, she sees that the child of her master is coming. So as soon as she sees us, she runs out to greet him. And she picks him up and she brings him in. The same way Eretz Yisrael is, as it were, we need to understand this, a shifcha is like the, the maidservant of the Jewish people. It's sticking itself out in order to receive the Jewish people that they should be able to walk right into the land of Israel. Okay? Now, so I want to understand, before we continue... I want to just point out the question. What is the understanding here of the idea that there's this protrusion? 
it's protruding from the land of Israel to outside of Israel, and it sticks itself out in order to receive the Jewish people. I want to understand the depth of that. What is the Medrash trying to say with that? And we'll come back to that question. But let's read on in the Medrash. Really just a beautiful Medrash. As we said, the one mountain protruded out and crushed all of those mighty warriors that were inside of the cave on the other side. Okay? Now it's very interesting. So what happens? So the Jewish people aren't even aware of the fact that they were just saved. They don't know that these soldiers were out to get them. The Be'er goes down. The Be'er, right? Remember we started speaking about the, the, the special water. We're talking about the Shira Sabe'er, the song. The Jewish people sang. We want to say, why were they singing this song now? There's a special song that they sang for the well of water which they had throughout the 40 years because this is, this is the key point here. The Medrash tells us that the water from that well went down into the Nachal, into the river that was underneath this, this canyon. The waters got stronger and stronger there. Interestingly, so the ones that were in the cave, they were killed when the two mountains came together. The ones that were down inside the valley, in the river, they were killed because the Be'er came and swept them away in the same way that at Yamsuf, the waters had swept away the Egyptians. That's why we have the connection of Yamsuf to over here, to the Nachal Arnon, to this river. As the Jewish people were coming in. So now the Jewish people passed through. They passed over these two mountains that came together. They didn't even realize that they were saved from the soldiers. They didn't even realize, perhaps, that there were mountains here. You couldn't even tell that they were mountains, as we mentioned before. I want them to know, God says. I want the Jewish people to understand what was what, what happened here, what they what was the soldiers that were killed. The well goes down into so it comes it, it sweeps away the people who were down in the valley. Then the water comes up to the caves. And it takes out all of these many um, the, the body parts of the many soldiers that were there, that were, that were ready to kill the Jews, who were killed, they themselves were killed, the, the soldiers, the Be'er brings them out. The Jewish people go back and they, they, they want to see the well. Where's the well? They need the water, right? And they see that the water is coming up from the valley, from the precipice, and it's bringing with it all of these limbs. So you see that the water went down into the nechalim, into the into the spring that was below. The next verse says, and from there they went to be'er. From there the waters came out. The water of the well came out. What do you mean? Was it from there, the well? The Medrash should say, the, the well was with them for the, for the entire time. So, what, do you, what does it mean? So this comes to teach us. And the water went down to inform the Jewish people to bring up so that they should be able to see what had happened. So the Jewish people are standing there at the edge watching the waters come up and saying, Come up, waters. They sang this song, Come up, waters. And they sang this song because they recognized the salvation that they had experienced. They recognized that HaKadosh Baruch who had saved them, not only had He made their path easy to pass over these mountains, but Hashem also protected them from the soldiers who wanted to hurt them, who wanted to cause their downfall. So it's an amazing thing. First of all, you know, Think if we think about it, the Medrash is telling us that this song really should have been sung all the way back when. This song should have been sung at the beginning of the 40 years. The Medrash tells us that this song was sung specifically now for a different reason than we would have thought. It wasn't just because of the well. It was because there was a recognition through the waters of the well of the miracle that God had performed for the Jewish people in saving them. So it's very interesting that the Medrash's assumption at the beginning is that they should be singing this song at the beginning when they received the water. 
But clearly, the Medrash is teaching us something very deep. That there's a specific occasion when we sing a song. When do we sing a song? We don't just necessarily sing a song when we're enjoying something that God is constantly providing for us, right? The waters Hashem gave us over the 40 years, we didn't sing a song yet. It was when the waters revealed to us an amazing miracle, when we experience a miracle, when we, we recognize something that Hashem is doing for us and we don't even realize it. That's when we sing a song. That's when we sing a song about the waters. And, and I, you know, as I'm speaking, I'm thinking that you know, it's easy for us to take for granted because Hashem provides for us. Hashem is giving us everything that we need. Hashem gives us the water that we need to drink. He gives us the food that we need. He gives us a roof over our heads. And yet the message is telling us that it seems to be saying that when do we notice the nace? When do we notice the miracle? It's only, you know, when do we sing a song? We sing only when it's a miracle, when, we, when there's an outstanding miracle. But what about singing for, for the daily miracles? And I think the message is telling us that, that we recognize at this point, I would ask the question in a different way. Why is it indeed, Hashem could have showed us this miracle in many different ways. Like Hashem could have made the, the mountains part again and then the Jewish people are standing at the edge. They can see looking down when it happened. They can see all of the bodies. Why did it have to happen through the water specifically? And I think that the, the idea here is that, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is showing us that there's two parts here. There's the miracle of being saved, which is an outstanding, unbelievable miracle. But then there's the daily miracle. And Hashem is showing us specifically through the waters, which we received every single day, which we didn't necessarily perceive as an awesome miracle. Hashem is showing us this amazing miracle so that we can recognize the amazing miracle, which is a daily miracle, which is that Hashem is sustaining us each and every day and giving us water, giving us food, giving us all of our needs, giving us everything that we have in our lives. So I believe that's, that's one message here of the Medrash. Now another point which we mentioned earlier, which is also amazing and powerful, is that the, the Medrash refers to the fact that there is a protrusion. There was a protrusion sticking out from the side of Eretz Yisrael, from the mountain on the side of Eretz Yisrael, to the Ma'ara, to the cave on the side of, of Chutzlarts outside of Israel. And what I wanted to understand is why is the protrusion on the side of Israel? Why wasn't it specifically on the side of Chutzlarts? And we also see that there's a sticking out, as we said, Eretz sticks itself out in order to receive the Jewish people. What is the idea behind that as well? And I was thinking that just the simple, the simple idea of these two mountains being across from each other and one mountain sticking itself out into the other side, it's Eretz Yisrael that's, that's the protrusion that sticks out towards the side of Chutz Laaretz. And the word that's used here uh, is Shadayim, which is a reference, which is the, the word Shadayim, is a, is, it's a protrusion, but it's specifically the protrusion of the part of the, of the female body, which gives Yanika, gives sustenance to, it, to, to the woman's baby. Okay? So it's representative of the fact that Eretz Yisrael gives sustenance, it sticks out as it were, to Chutzlaretz and gives sustenance to Chutzlaretz. You know, I am here sitting in the land of Israel, sharing with you Divrei Torah, and in a certain sense, I am sticking myself out, and I am extending myself, I'm extending words of Torah to you wherever you are. You might be outside of Israel, you might be in Israel. But the idea is that the sword, Kimitsiya and Tetzitaira, and we have an idea that the, the, the Torah comes, spiritual sustenance comes into the world, Hashem sends the Shefa down into Israel and it comes out to the entire world. And that's being hinted to over here. And I think it's profound that when does that occur? How does it occur? When is the spiritual sustenance reach out, destroy, interestingly, destroy those who are the enemies of the Jewish people? It reaches itself out as the Jewish people are coming into the land of Israel. Because the land of Israel is a Shifcha. The land of Israel is like a maidservant to the Jewish people. It's the place where the Jewish people can serve Hashem. It is the vehicle through which Klal Yisrael has the ability to serve Hashem in the ultimate way. So when the Jewish people come into Israel, Israel sticks itself out in order to receive them. But in another sense, Israel also sticks itself out in order to provide sustenance to Chutzlarts, to, to all those places outside of Israel. And how does it occur? When the Jewish people come into Israel, when the Jewish people are committed to our spirituality, we cause the spirituality to be spread out to the entire world. It's not limited to us, but rather when we do what we're supposed to do, when we are trying to serve Hashem in the proper way, the result is, number one, 
the spiritual sustenance goes out to the entire world. Number two, our enemies are destroyed and we don't even know about it. And number three, we get to recognize that Kodesh Baruch is doing miracles. God is performing awesome, spectacular miracles for us. And number four, we get to recognize that the miracles that are occurring for us every day are also awesome miracles. So I want to bless you and ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us. That we should be able to recognize, first to recognize the daily miracles. Hashem should also show us the awesome, unusual miracles that He's doing for us. And Hashem should help us that we should be able to be a reason, a source for spirituality should flow through us and out into the world. Whether it's, for, whether it's where, no matter where we are, whether we're in Israel, in the land of Israel, or whether we're in Chutzlar, so we should always be somebody who's able to provide spiritual sustenance to others. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.